I'm back to shooting 35 millimeter film. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain this new chapter in my photography journey. And if you stay to the end, I'll show you how I'm using Affinity Photo to invert my black and white negative scans. Have you ever heard someone say, I don't shoot 35 millimeter film anymore. What's the point? If I'm going to shoot 35 millimeter, I'm going to shoot in digital. Well, in the not too distant past, I think I've been guilty of saying that myself. For this YouTube channel, I try to be as transparent as possible for what gear I use, how I do my photography. And some of my decisions may not make a lot of sense to people watching, but my decisions are based around my needs or my perceived needs. And so what I would find important, you might not. And like many photographers, I can convince myself I need a certain piece of gear <laughs> when I really probably don't. After using medium format for a couple of years, after returning to film photography, I went to large format, 4x5. Now I know I said I was going to keep my 4x5 gear. I do have a large format camera. It's 4x5. And I uh, don't plan on getting rid of that. I plan on keeping using that. Well, it's in transit right now to be sold. And when this video comes out, I may have already sold it. The lenses and the camera itself. I couldn't keep trying to justify using a camera that didn't work well with my style of photography. I think I had a romantic attachment to the format and I've decided to face the truth and be honest with myself and part ways with that format. So that brings me back to where I started. From now on shooting film, I'm going to be shooting 35 millimeter. So what changed my mind? Well, it was a number of things that all came together at the same time and observations I've been making over the last year on my photography. First, I got a new film camera. A subscriber to this channel, he goes by Old Film Guy. Also, I know him as Robert Gully. He generously donated this camera to the channel. It's a Nikon N80. It works great with all my lenses and uh, he wanted me to have this camera to use on the channel. I I'm extremely grateful and moved by the gesture. <laughs> I'm very humbled by it. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this camera to good use. So thanks, Robert. And secondly, I finally figured out how to do some scanning with my DSLR. It's not that I didn't know how to do it. I just didn't have a good lens to allow me to do it. So what I did is I went out and bought a 55 millimeter micro lens, a manual focus. It's an old lens. It works good enough to do the scans. It, I'm getting some really good results. And that's really been kind of the uh, uh, barrier between me and 35 millimeter was I wasn't really happy with the scans I was getting on a flatbed scanner. So this last couple weeks, I've been scanning some old negatives and seeing the work I did in my early years on slide film, I was quite moved. <laughs> I was almost moved to tears at some of these images. I uh, I don't know if it was just experience. It brought back uh, experience uh, and emotion, the emotions of making the images at the time. But I really liked the images I was scanning. And I was thinking, I'm not giving up anything when I shoot 35 millimeter. I may not have the big negative, but there's so many other attributes to shooting 35 millimeter that for me make up for not having the big negative. So that really went a long way to pushing me towards shooting 35 millimeter. Another point would be the cost of film. It just, it seems to be going up every day. And I started looking at the amount that I'm shooting larger formats, especially four, four by five. When I have, when I buy a box of 25 sheets and it, it's 60 something dollars, what kind of project can I do with 25 sheets of film? In 35 millimeter, I just feel like I can, I can uh, be more expressive. I can take more risks. I can do a lot more photography. And if I'm truthful with myself, 
my enlargement needs aren't that demanding. Most of the stuff that I print are in magazines in book sizes, maybe calendar with an occasional large print. And if I really need to go large, I've always got my 35 millimeter digital camera, which has plenty of resolution. If you work carefully with 35 millimeter film, decent sized enlargements are possible. But resolution isn't the main reason I do photography. <laughs> I, th I think I've, I've come to the point where I'm not chasing resolution anymore. There was a time in my early film years that I thought I needed a bigger negative. But for me, there's just too many compromises now when I'm using a bigger negative. Medium format's not too bad, but large format just slows me away, slows me down way too much. What I get when I use 35 millimeter is a lot more lens choices. And for me, that, that's like having more paint brushes. I like being able to shoot wide and telephoto in areas that other formats just can't, can't touch. I like being able to, to shoot longer lenses and the lenses are actually manageable in size. I like to be able to carry just one format with, with multiple mediums. I like to be able to shoot film and digital. These are all the reasons why I've come to the conclusion that 35 millimeter just works best for me. And it always has. It's just one of those things where I've never been willing to admit to it. <laughs> it's it's there's it's so easy to have a romantic idea of photography. I'm going to go out with my large format camera and I'm going to do all this stuff, but the reality is it doesn't fit my shooting style. I put a high value on versatility. I love the fact that I can have multiple mediums, I can have digital, I can have film and all I need is the lenses I already have. I don't have to carry multiple formats. That versatility to me is really sexy. <laughs> it really, I really find that to, to be very cool, you know. I like that it's kind of future proof because the reality is I'm going to be buying more digital cameras in the future. I mean, right now I'm kind of slow to move to something else, mainly because I don't have the money. And I like that ability to keep one foot in the past and one foot in the future. I think that's a good place to be. Now, I'm not saying any of this to discourage you from trying out different formats. I think it's, it's a great experience to use different formats. And I'm not saying that you can't take great pictures with larger formats. I'm just, for me, it, I have to give up too much of the way I do photography. And it, most of that's been ingrained over 30 years of photography. It's really hard for me to use a different approach to making images when I've done it on a, on a regular basis, thousands of assignments shooting a certain way. It's not that I can't learn to do other things. It's just that I don't really see the need to. <laughs> that sounds a bit arrogant, but I've spent a lifetime developing the way I do photography. And it has worked out pretty well for me as far as the images I was able to produce. But I wouldn't want to discourage anybody from trying large format, 4x5, 8x10. If you can afford it, go for it. I mean, this is, you know, a hobby or a, per, a personal form of expression for a lot of people. Maybe your, your, your dream camera is a Pentax 6x7. It's a big old camera. And maybe you're happy with just a 105 lens or something. But that's what really helps you create the image you want to make. Then that's what you should do. I don't want to be negative. I don't want this to come across as being negative. This is just, it's taken me a while to get to the realization that there's really no reason for me to shoot larger formats when the photography I want to do is done best with the flexibility and the lens choices I get with 35 millimeter. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. I just wanted for the regular viewers of this channel to understand kind of the direction that I'm going to be going here in the future. And as I promised, I'm going to show how I use Affinity Photo to edit 
my DSLR scans. I'm going to use the uh, Infinity Photo to invert the black and white negative. Something I thought I had to have a special plugin for. Turns out it's really not that hard. So let's jump in and, and take a look. Okay, we've got a RAW file from a Nikon D810. That's the camera I used to do my DSLR scanning. I photographed this image with the emulsion side up. And the reason that I did it that way was I read somewhere where it was a little sharper to, to, uh, to copy it that way. It's not a big deal because it's just one extra step. So the first thing we're going to need to do here is go to Tones. We're going to go ahead and click on black and white. And I'm going to hit Curves. I didn't realize how easy it was to invert a negative. I thought you needed a, a special plugin, something like Negative Lab Pro, uh, like that you would use in Lightroom. But really, for black and white, it's, it's quite simple. You just come to Curves and you pull down the, the highlights all the way down, and you lift the, the uh, blacks all the way up. And then you'll grab it in the center here and you'll use that for exposure. And you can darken it to, to where you want it. All I'm really doing here is trying to get a balanced file to take into the photo persona. Something with enough information. And this is a 16-bit tip. There's a lot of information here. And you notice in the histograms that now that it's been inverted, it works backwards. So just keep that in mind. You can also come over here to basic and lighten and darken with this as well. You have to remember that still it's 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 backwards <laughs> than you're used to. So instead of darkening the image when you slide it to the blacks, it's actually lightening it. Not a big deal. I think that looks pretty good. I will finish it in the photo persona. So we'll go ahead and hit develop. So the first thing I need to do here is is flip the image, get it on the correct side. So we'll go to documents, flip horizontal. Now we need to get it in the right orientation because this was in a landscape orientation. So we're going to rotate it clockwise. And that's how it should be right there. Now we're going to crop it. Plenty of information here. I can crop it quite a bit. Just going to fine tune it. I think that looks pretty good. Bring in just a little bit more. This little dark area in the corner I don't really need in the frame. Okay. At this point that I'm now that I'm happy with the crop, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this one. So this next step is where I want to lighten, darken the image, and work on the contrast. And I like to do that by starting in levels. I'm going to pull the uh, slider all the way to the edge here. And if you hold down the Option key, you can see where you're starting to clip the highlights. I'm going to go right up to where it's just starting to clip. This is a lot of white in this image. So we're going to want it to be pretty white. This is a frost-covered scene. That's what drew me to it. And we're going to do the same thing with the blacks right up to where it's starting to clip the blacks, right where there's not going to be detail in the blacks. This is something you can do to taste. I mean, you could you could definitely make it darker and you, and make it more contrasty. It's That doesn't fit what I want in this image. So I'm going to just go right about here. Now this, I could leave this just like it is and it would probably be just fine. Now I'm going to kind of fine tune the image just a little bit. I think overall I want to lighten it up just a tad because it's I want it to have that cold kind of frosty feel to it. So we're going to lighten it up about, I don't know, maybe 10%. That looks pretty good. And I think I'm going to burn in a little bit of the leaf to give it a little more definition. But you have to have it on the pixel layer to do that. There we go. Just subtle, just enough to give a little more definition to the leaf. I'm happy with that. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and darken up the, the edges just a little bit. Give it a little bit of a vignette. Just uh, subtle. Now we're going to need to sharpen it. 
So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I find that anytime I do scanning or of any kind, of, it's going to need some kind of sharpening. I'm going to use a little unsharp mask. This is a an area where each file, each image is going to need probably a different amount of sharpening. You want to be careful not to overdo it. If you, you can tell, but if you're overdoing it, it'll add a halo effect to the uh, some of the lines and stuff, and you don't want that. You want to have a, a fairly light touch. This is film. There's only so much sharpening you can do. I think that's going to look just fine. Lots of good detail here. This is going to be an image that would enlarge quite well, I think. I'm actually quite happy with that. It's pretty simple stuff. This is, um, <laughs> like, like I said, this is so simple, I am almost feel silly doing a video about it. But being able to use your DSLR as a scanner really opens up a lot of uh, possibilities for shooting film. Now, I know I, I probably seem like a flake. <laughs> probably seem like a flake. I've changed my formats over the last few years a couple times. And uh, here I am back to 35 millimeter. What's wrong with that guy? But, you know, this is... This is when you're passionate about something, you you want the best. You want the best tool to get the job, to get the image you want, you know. Funny thing is, that best tool for me is, has always been the best tool. I just, uh, just forgot that, you know. Just forgot it. Well, I'm going to end today's video right here. I've kind of rambled on long enough. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. If you've got any questions... Leave them in the comments. Hopefully I'm going to have a, a shoot video for you pretty soon. I'm waiting for some decent weather. i got to be pretty picky about when I go out and shoot now with gas being real expensive. So uh, hopefully I can get out with this new camera pretty soon. And once again, I really want to thank Robert for this, sending this camera. I'm going to put it to use shortly. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.